Hi everybody, it's Nikki and I'm here to do part two of 15 on my G6, my Dexcon G6 Freestyle Libre Medtronic Guardian comparison. Um, and I left off on charging transit. Trans this is not, this is all personal experience, personal opinion, personal thought, nothing, no medical advice. Um, I left off on charging transmitter. So what was I going to say? Okay, um, the G6, no charging. You do not have to charge the transmitter, but you, but the transmitter must be replaced in three months, and it cannot start a new sensor when there's less than t less than ten days until expiration. Um, and you must charge the reader. So I don't know about that ten days thing. I'm not sure whether or not there's a workaround for that. I, I don't have any idea. I know that for right now, that basically it sounds like if you're trying to start a new sensor in under ten days till expiration, you're not going to be able to do it. And you do need to replace the transmitter every three months, um, but no charging. The transmitter, charging the reader, okay. Uh, the Libre, disposable transmitter, but you must charge the reader. So the Libre, everything comes in one box. It is all disposable. You get the box, you put it on, you wear it, and everything goes in the trash. Um, you, so there's nothing to charge as far as the transmitter goes, no batteries, nothing. However, you do have to charge the reader and I'm good on doing that um, about once every 10 days. In general, it's kind of like in between, you know, while my thing is warming up, it's usually a good time to charge it. Um, that was for the 10 day sensor though. So I don't know what the 14 day sensor will be like. Okay, the Guardian, you must charge the transmitter between uses and that's usually good for about 30 minutes. It's, it's you know, at least 30 minutes. Um, and you must replace batteries in the charger every few months. Okay. Um, Sorry, the signal. So this is just about how well these things keep their signal. Um, and I will say that I meant to come back and fill in the information here, and it looks like I didn't do that, so I'm gonna tell you what I know about it. And that is the Dexcom G6. Um, it does lose signal outside of a range. So, you, so there's a range you need to be within. Um, what I don't know is what that range is. I know it's in the book and I can't remember, I don't know why I didn't write it down, but I didn't. Um, I know that in my house, I'm pretty much free to kind of move about the house as long as I'm not away for long. So let's say a couple of minutes. And as between one floor and another seems to be fine, different rooms seem to be fine. However, if I go two floors down and I'm there for 20 minutes, I probably will lose the, the signal. Um, when I return, it's usually really quick to pick it back up again. Um, so it's not really that big of a deal to me. Um, the Libre never loses the signal. I think that's really neat. And there is no range to keep within. So for my Libre, if I don't feel like carrying it on my run and I leave it here and I go for a six mile run, when I come home and pick it up to swipe it, it's good to go. Um, so that it, so there is no range for the Libre. And then for the Guardian, it also loses signal when outside of range. Um, again, I don't know, it, you know, it doesn't lose it that quickly, let's say 20 minutes or 15, 10 minutes, whatever it is. Um, however, it's a little bit slower to pick back up the signal again once you're back. Um, and that usually shouldn't be a problem because you're usually wearing it as an insulin pump, so it's usually on your body. However, sometimes if you take it off to go swimming, that's, that's when I ran into it. Um, and this last couple months when I have not been wearing my pump, but, um, okay, extending. I've never been that good into extent, good with extending anyway, so I don't know much about this category, so I'll tell you what I know. And that is that, um, the G6 can be extended for as much as 10 more days. And from what I hear, all of this is from what I hear, um, the ability to extend is determined based on how good your values are towards the end of your sensor's life. So if you are looking really good on day 10, you should be able to extend. Um, if your values are just kind of not very good on day nine or 10, then you probably cannot extend or don't even wanna bother. Um, Again, all hearsay because I don't do it, but I'm looking forward to try to trying. And I'll say that my friend Joanne did come on and come and show a really easy way to try to extend. So that's going to help my motivation because some of those things were a little bit complicated. Um, and I'll, I'll put the link in there so you can see how she's doing it because that does make it look much easier. Um, the Libre. The 10 day sensor, this, it gets different here. The 10 day sensor can be extended for another 10 currently. However, from what I hear, the 14 day sensor cannot be extended at this time. Um, so again, the 10 day sensor is going, is on its way out. Um, it's gonna be replaced by a 14 day sensor. And there was a lot of talk about 
financially what that what that meant um, but basically they'll give you two sensors a month instead of three sensors a month and it pretty much covers the same amount of time slightly more money um, and you lose the ability to extend um, the Guardian can be an extent can be extended it's the only one I think that can be extended for an undetermined amount of time um, however it also depends on the strength of the sensor towards end of life I have heard people say that they've gotten 38 days from their Guardian sensor or from any of their Medtronic sensors um, and then again, there's people who can't get two real days out of it. So it's kind of, it's, it's up in the air, um, with the new transmitter, maybe that's going to be something that will be kind of an added bonus. Um, calibrations, G6, none required. Manual says you can calibrate in order to help improve accuracy. Um, I have just done this a couple of times and it does seem to help accuracy, but I really haven't had much opportunity because it's got pretty good accuracy. So I don't know what role calibration plays. I know that none none are required. Um, whereas, well, okay, the Libre, also again, no calibrations. The actual reader uh, doubles as a meter, so you can get freestyle test strips and do that, but you don't need to do any kind of calibrations. Um, and then the Guardian requires two calibrations per day. Specific rules for calibrating in auto mode make this a painstaking process at this time. Um, and Medtronic's recommendation is three to four calibrations per day. Um, again, there is a new transmitter. It's possible that all of that nonsense has been alleviated. I'm not sure. Um, but as far as those rules in auto mode, it used to be calibration factor rules and 35%. Um, there was a couple of different rules, but they may have been relieved with the new transmitter. So it's possible that calibrating, I think you still have to calibrate twice a day and they do still recommend three to four times a day, but I think it's easier now. So that might be a good thing. Um, okay, errors, type and frequency. Again, I can only report on what I know and what I've seen so far. And the Dexcom, there have been a couple of errors. Uh, one, it was just not a good sensor and I did change it out on day two, I think, you know, at Dexcom's um, recommendation. And... Um, in general, I have gotten a couple of sensor error alerts and it basically it tells you that it may take up to 30 minutes to resolve. Everything has resolved itself so far. So I haven't seen one not, you know, resolve. I have lost the signal a few times outside of when I've been out of the range, just where I've been sitting there and it seems to drop the signal. Um, again, everything picks itself back up again and that's, so I haven't, so it hasn't been detrimental. Um, I have heard from... FUD, my friends at FU Diabetes, that there is one theory and Dexcom is, is now recommending for people to wait 10 minutes after removing the old sensor before putting in a new one because this might help resolve some of those errors. Um, and that, that would lead to a, the idea is that there might be a problem with insufficient time between ending the old sensor and starting the new one. Um, and so maybe that will help if you're getting errors. I don't know. For me, the errors have not been that bad. Okay, um, Libre. Again, I can only report on what I've seen and there are almost no errors. The only errors I've ever gotten with, I got one error where the thing just wouldn't read and the sensor was gone. Um, but pretty much the only other errors I've gotten, not pretty much, the only errors I've gotten have been during exercise. And I think it's when, not just with a rising blood sugar or not the sweat or anything else, I think it's when my blood sugar has really been on the rise and then a fast change in direction and it's beginning to go down. Um, so I think that that change in direction is what causes the error and it will tell you to wait 10 minutes um, and before you try to swipe it again and every single time I've waited 10 minutes, swiped and it's been fine. So those are the errors. Um, Guardian, again, pre-new transmitter, there was lost sensor, calibration not accepted, BG not received, sensor expired, sensor updating, change sensor, cannot find sensor signal, no calibration occurred. Um, I listed it like that, not because I'm picking on Guardian, but because I've experienced every single one of those errors and some of them like, you know, a couple a week or a couple a day. Um, so the errors were really a problem that might be something that's changed with the new transmitter. Um, okay. Following capability, this is another thing that I'm just not very up to speed on, but I will tell you this. Um, Dexcom G6, the following capability, it's an easy setup. I can view my BG on phone and Apple Watch and can add followers. Um, I got it set up. And that's amazing because I haven't gotten anything set up, including, you know, 
and I, there, there it is on my phone. I don't know if you can see. I mean, there it is on my watch. Um, and that popped up on my watch when I set it up on my phone. And I set it up on the phone just by putting in one code. So it's been a lot of really good stuff like that. And now my mom calls me around the clock and sends 86 texts an hour sometimes. So be careful what you wish for. Um, Libre, the options are available with the 10 day sensor, um, but there are currently none for the 14 day sensor. As soon as I write that, I think that there are, I think there's a Libre link, something for 14 day, Libre link software. I don't know anything about it. Um, I guess it's compatible with iPhone. I don't even have the 14 day sensor yet. So I'm just trying to put whatever I've heard. Um, the 10 day sensor uses Mio Mio and Spike. Um, there might be something else. That's what I had that set up. It was great, but I think that none of those accessories are any good on the 14 days. So I think they're all going to get dropped anyway. Um, however, you can use the 10 day again on the Apple watch and the iPhone, but I think all that gets dropped with the 14 day sensor. Um, okay. So then the guardian sensor, I don't have an idea. I think there is, I think night scout is the one I, I there's a new guardian connect which uses a separate transmitter that cannot be paired with the 670g but it can be used to connect to the phone but if used in conjunction with the guardian 3 and 670g it would require wearing two sensors um if using minimed connect you can hook up with nice scout um again sorry i'm not trying to, to pick on medtronic but they're a little bit behind they're like on my speed <laughs> with technology because, um, you know, we, I can figure them out. <laughs> That's how I know that they're behind. <laughs> uh, and that's the truth. Okay. Oh, my, I love it. Okay. I'll be back for part 18 of this.